We are now going to start explaining to you how monetary policy is applied by the Reserve Bank to influence the banks and the rest of the economy. But before we can do that, I have to explain to you what the liquidity deficit of a bank is. What does that mean? And to explain that, I'm going to use this balance sheet that we have done earlier. So what I've done here, it's a very simple balance sheet. Bank A has received a million rand in cash deposits. So at the moment, this bank has a million rand deposits in the form of cash. Right, now you already know that this bank can't hold all of this cash with itself, that it has to hold a part of this cash as cash reserves with the Reserve Bank, that it also has to hold some liquid reserves. And then, of course, this bank also has to hold a certain amount of cash in case clients want to come and withdraw that cash. So we're going to lump all those reserves together. And let's say that the bank has to hold 10% of the total amount of deposits in reserves. So it has to hold um, 100,000 Rand in reserves, which means that there is only 900,000. I'm going to wrap this up. So there's only 900,000 Rand left in cash. So this is what this bank's balance sheet looks like now. Right. Will this bank be able to make a profit? Of course not, because it holds cash and you don't earn any interest on cash. So what is this bank going to do? It's rather going to lend out this money. So this bank will probably not hold this amount in cash. It will rather lend out everything so that it reserves, it holds 10% of reserves but the rest of its balance sheet is laid out. Right. When a bank's balance sheet looks like this, we say that it is fully loaned up. It can't really create any more loans because it doesn't have any more reserves available. Right. Now let's say the bank's balance sheet looks like this now. And now a client comes and withdraws hundred thousand rand. Right, so a client that holds a deposit now wants to withdraw hundred thousand rand. So what is going to happen? The deposit in the first place is going to decrease to nine hundred thousand. Right. The reserves can now also decrease because it, the bank has to hold 10% of the total deposits. So the bank, the reserves can now decrease by 10,000 Rand. So the reserves will be 90,000 Rand that the bank needs to hold. But you see, this client withdrew 100,000 Rand. 10,000 of that can come from the reserves. So it is 100,000 Rand that the client withdrew. 10,000 of this comes from the reserves because the reserves decreased from 100,000 to 90,000. So this bank still needs another 90,000 Rand from somewhere to be able to give to this client. So this bank at the moment has a deficit of 90,000 Rand. In order to be able to give this client it, the 100,000 Rand, this bank has a deficit of 90,000 Rand. Now how can the bank finance this deficit? Where can the money come from? In the first place, Bank A can go to another bank which may have a liquidity surplus. Maybe someone deposited money with that bank on that day. Right, so Bank A 
can finance this deficit by borrowing from another bank, let's say Bank B. And we call that interbank lending. Right, so Bank B will provide a 90,000 rand to Bank A. But let's say all of the banks are in deficit on a particular day. Then they have to borrow from the Reserve Bank. Right, and when they borrow from the Reserve Bank, we call that accommodation. Right. Now, there are different ways in which banks can borrow from the Reserve Bank. The first way is by borrowing against their reserves. Right. Now, we've said that banks have to hold 2.5% cash with the Reserve Bank on a daily basis. Remember we explained that in the previous video clip. But the banks do not really have to hold 2.5% of total deposits every day. It has to maintain 2.5% over a period of 30 days or 20 working days. Right, so that means that the banks can hold on a particular day when it has a deficit, a little bit less reserves. And that is when they borrow against their reserves. But that will mean that at some, on, on some day within the next 20 days, 20 working days, they're going to have to hold more than the amount of reserves, more than 2.5% reserves. So then on average over the 20 working days, they still maintain 2.5% reserves against their deposits. Right, so that's the first way in which banks can borrow from the Reserve Bank, and also the cheapest, because they don't pay any interest on it. Right, then the second way, and the most important way as far as monetary policy is concerned, is repurchase transactions, or repo transactions. Now we're going to explain to you exactly how that works, but banks borrow from the Reserve Bank at the repo rate, and we call those repurchase transactions or repo loans. And then the very last one we call marginal lending. And that will take place at a much higher rate than the repo loans, and therefore banks will usually try to refrain from using this marginal lending. It's much too expensive, and if you go and look at the Reserve Bank's um, quarterly bulletins, you will see, I think for nearly a decade, banks have not made use of this marginal lending facility. Right, now in the next video clip, I'm going to explain to you how th that bank, that the Reserve Bank actually want banks to come and borrow money from it.